the peace you have given unto us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This evening, Lord Almighty God, we come before you, Lord, asking you, Lord Almighty, to purify us once again. Forgive us our sins. Even the sins that we don't know, Lord, but we have committed, God Almighty, not pleasing unto your sight, Lord. This evening, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to forgive us, Lord. Forgive us our iniquities, Lord. As we stand in this place, Lord Almighty God, let your spirit take control of everything, Lord. Let your spirit take over this service, oh Jesus. We lay on each and every Lord and you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We are nothing without you, Lord. We are nothing without you, Lord Almighty God. To the songs we are going to sing, Lord Almighty God. Let us not sing by our own strength. Hallelujah, even to the world we are going to listen on here this evening, Lord Almighty God. Let your spirit quicken us, Lord. Let your word, hallelujah, Jesus, reprove us. Let your word correct us. Let your word teach us, Lord. Hallelujah, we give you glory, Lord. We give you honor, Lord Almighty God. Prepare our hearts, Lord. Prepare our hearts, Lord. Hallelujah, we pray, Lord, for the one leading the songs, King of Kings. Anoint him, Lord. Anoint the one giver, Lord Almighty God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord together.
as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who told the truth in unrighteousness. And verse 2, 19, because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God hath shown it unto them. And 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, be understood by the things that are made, even his internal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And the last one is a very known Colossians 2 9. For in him dwelleth all, all, not, not the literal, say all the fullness of godly of Godhead bodily. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Oh Lord Jesus, we give you all the glory, Father. We want to see you. We want to understand you. We want to feel you, oh Lord Jesus. Tonight, oh Lord, let your spirit fill in this place, oh Lord. Use me, O oh Lord, as we go to teach, O oh Lord. Let us, all of us, learn from you, O oh Lord Jesus. Let us, me not use my word, but use your word, O oh Lord Jesus. Let me use, I use your scriptures, O oh Lord Jesus, to understand who you are, O oh Lord Jesus. I worship and give you all the praise, Father, for there is none like you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. You may sit down. In all this occasion, we have seen the word Godhead. And as I say from the beginning, I don't want to use my, my words, I don't want to use my thoughts, I want to, to hear what the Lord has to say. Because if we read in 2 Timothy 3 and 16, can you put us from as Brother Ricky? 2 Timothy 3 and 16 say, all scriptures is given by inspiration of God. So, what are we going to read, what are we going to see is by the inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So the word of God is the only thing that we can use to learn who God is. Because he's inspired by him. He's the one who is eh, the, the one who is behind all of these people who have wrote the Bible. He's the one who inspired them. So today I want to use the Bible as much as I can so we can see what is the Godhead. Because it is a subject that is so controversial that if you go to Google, if you go and read Google, the word Godhead, there will come so many different types of Godhead that you'll be confused what is the Godhead. So, but let us see what the Bible says. Let us not see what the world say or what the Google say or what anyone say. Today we want to see what the, what, what the, the Bible says. Let's start from the Acts 17. Acts 17, here is Paul, is Paul uh, talking in the Mass Hill. He was talking here near us. We, a lot of people have gone here to, to Mass Hill. He was talking to them. They were professors, they were all of this. And he is telling them that God is, uh, you know, at that time the Greeks were worshipped. Uh, many gods, the god of um, Olympus and all of this. And all those gods, all these gods they had, they were graven gods. They, god, they were gods that they were made by hand or by gold or by human thoughts. But here we see Paul uh, tell, tell them that for most as we are offspring of God, we came from God. Everybody came from the, we are all, we are, we, we are, we are all made from the from the offspring of Adam. We all came from Adam. We all came from one person, from Adam. And Adam was created, uh, by the Lord is the one who created by his hand, he took the dust, and he breathed on him. So all of us, we are offspring of God. We are not to think that the Godhead is like unto God, all silver or stone, created by art and man device. He is rebuking them because they were uh, worshiping God, which they have made by themselves, and they were like, they were, that's the God they were worshipping that day. So we were telling them, don't think that our, our God is uh, like that. It's not like uh, someone you can make by the silver or gold. And I went to search what the Greek Bible say about 
this verse. How the Greek Bible, Bible translate this verse? Because uh, the King James is translated from the Greek and the Latin. So I went to read it in the, in the Greek version. If you read the Greek version, the word Godhead, instead of Godhead, the Greek Bible say Theo. So it is, don't you think that the law, that, that Theo is like unto God? So he's telling them, our God is not about uh, silver or gold. He's not someone that you can make with human devices. Here we see the word God is, is referring to the divine of, of God. It's the divinity of God we see here. If you go and read it in the Greek, because the Greek they don't use the word Godhead. In all these three, they don't, they don't use the word Godhead. In, in Acts 17, they are, the, 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 the word they use is Theo. And in first Rome, Rome, in the Romans where we read and 20, we see here uh, Paul telling them about the invisible things that now come visible to the people. If you read the Greek verse, the original Greek verse is Theotis. It's is the divine nature of God. It is Theo. It is who God is. That was, uh, that was uh, the Greek Bible say. It has not have, in the Greek Bible there is no about Godhead. In the Greek Bible they don't use the Godhead. They use in the Acts 17 Theo and in uh, in in Romans 1 they use Theotis. The same they use in Colossians 2 9. In the Colossians 2 9 they, they use Theotis. It's the same. Theo. It's about God. They say that in all the fullness all the fullness of God is in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. So it is about the divine nature of God or the, 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 diet, the deity of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And if you go further and do another study, in Colossians 1, 1 9, it says, God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Who is he? Christ. So, we, from the beginning, we understand what is the Godhead. The Godhead is not what we see outside. Because outside, the majority, when they say Godhead, they see different things. But here we see the Godhead from the beginning, it is Theos, it is God. So, what the other they say it is Godhead is not true. This week as I was studying, I went to see Sorry, what they mean when there are other denominations they say they say uh, Godhead. And as I was doing my research, I saw that there are some people when they see when they see when they say about Godhead, they see a person with three heads and one body. But I was like, our God is a monster. <laughs> because they were showing they say we have one God, he has one body, but there are three people. Like he has one body here, where God the Father is here, Jesus is here, and the Holy Spirit is here. So it is uh, three in one. You know the shampoo they say two in one? They, for them it was three in one. And I, I saw another type of trinity that they say there are three different people. There is the Father, there is the Son, and there is the Holy Ghost. There are three. That's why, if you go to the Greek Orthodox, I was raised in Greece and I was going to the Orthodox Church when I was, when I was a child, we always do like this when we pray. We, we always say three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's the meaning of the, that's why the Greeks they do this, because they mean three. That's why they, they pray in three. But, and we were told in the Bible to worship three gods. Is there anywhere in the Bible that we have three gods? Is there anywhere in the Bible we have two gods? Not, not only three, two gods. We don't have anywhere. Because they don't want to read the word of God. They want the understanding of the, of the human mind or the professor. In Hebrew 1 and 3, Hebrew 1, 
let me start from 1.1. 1, 1. Hebrew 1.1. 1, 1. God, who at sundry time, in David's manner, speak in time past unto the Father by the prophet, before the Lord was speaking through the prophets, has, has in those, in this last, last they spoken unto us by his son who he has appointed heir, heir of all things but who by whom he is made the world the world the world who be the brightness of his glory and the expression image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself black our sins sat down at the right hand of the majesty of on high. Praise the name of the Lord. Here we are told that the Lord, He is the Jesus is the expression, is the, is the express image of, he, of His presence. Of who? Of God. He is the image. You know, we are told nobody has seen God anymore, anywhere. Nobody has ever seen God. Nobody has ever seen. Because God is a spirit and He used His Son Jesus so we can see Him. The invisible thing became visible in the New Testament. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, we have read so many, uh, so many times that the, there are three people who are co equal, co eternal, co existent. But let me ask you. Where was Jesus in the Old Testament if they were all equal and all uh, eternal or coexistent? That means they will exist forever. In the Old Testament, we have not mentioned even once the name of Jesus. We don't have any scripture reference about the name of Jesus in the Old Testament. We are told the Son will be born, but there is nowhere we have evidence that there were three sitting on the throne. Praise the name of the Lord. Because in Deuteronomy 6 and 4, we all know that it is written here. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, our God is one Lord. He has been one Lord. From the beginning has been one Lord. He has never been two or three. In Genesis, let's go in Genesis, let's go in the beginning and see what the word of the Lord said. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. There is no plurality. There is no nothing that uh, say that there were two. In the beginning, there is only one God who created everything. And the, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moving upon the face of the water. So we see, even here we, we see the Spirit of God, not of God, not of plurality, the Spirit of God. One God. Let us go in the New Testament. John 1 and 2. John 1 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We don't have anything about plurality. We don't have anything about what they say about co, co equal or coexistent. The same was in the beginning with God. So here, John is referring the beginning. In the Genesis, he find the Genesis how the world began, and we were told that is only one God. There has never been two or three, as people imply. Praise the name of the Lord. But let us see about the Godhead. We have seen, we have seen that in Colossians say all the fullness dwell in Jesus. Let us see deep about that thing. We all know about the Father. He is our heavenly Father because He is our Creator. In the Old Testament, He was called Father because He is the one who created everything and even us. That's why we were calling Him Father. Praise the name of the Lord. In, in Matthew 6 uh, and 9, we remember how the, Jesus told us to pray. In this manner, therefore we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Praise the name of the Lord. We always refer him as our Father because he is the Father from the creation. He is the one who created us. So he is our Father. Praise the name of the Lord. 
We also call him Heavenly Father. Uh, Matthew 6, 26. We call him as our Heavenly Father because he's in heaven. He's our Heavenly Father. Praise the name of the Lord. So, our God is from the beginning. He is the Father because he is our creator. He is the one who made us and uh, we uh, we call him the Father because he is the Father of everything. Praise the name of the Lord. All Christians, if you go and ask who is the Father, they will tell you it's God. Even the one who believe uh, in Trinity or anywhere, they believe where uh, the name of the Father is the Father is God. But also, He is the Father of Jesus Christ. Because through Him, through God, is a, through the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, Mary, con uh, Mary got pregnant. So He is the Father of Jesus Christ. Because uh, the Holy Ghost moved up in the Virgin Mary and she brought a son. So Jesus has not have an earthly father. He had only one father, the Holy Ghost, who is our heavenly father. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus, Jesus Christ is the only begotten son. We don't Jesus had he has no uh, a, a, God has only one begotten son. Let's read uh, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise the Lord. You know the name begotten means unique, means one of a kind, means something different. The same time, the same time it was used when Isaac was born, begotten. Because what is unique is it, that that does not mean that does not have another sons or another children, but it is a different child. Like for Abraham, he had another children, but he had Isaac, who was the begotten, the the, or the unique son for him, because it was the promised son. In the name of the Lord, even for for God. Uh, Jesus was the begotten, the only begotten, because he's the only that was born through the Holy Ghost. He's the only that who does not have a earthly father. All of us, the Bible called us uh, children of God, son and daughters of God. That's why we are co-equal with uh, with Jesus. When, when we come in the kingdom of God, when we are baptized uh, by the water and by the Spirit, we become the children of, of God, but we are not uh, begotten. We are his children. And we can read that in 2 Corinthians 6.18. Let us read 2 Corinthians 6.18. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Almighty God. It's a promise. You will be his children. Also, in 1 John 3 and 1, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, for we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth not us, because it, 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 it know him not. Praise the name of the Lord. And the last one, Philippians 2.15. That ye may be blameless and harmless, and the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of the crooked and previous nation, among whom he shine as light in the world. Praise the name of the Lord. We are sons and daughters of the Lord when we are born again. Because we are told when we, we come and, and be baptized, we die the way Jesus died, and we, we come, when we come up, we come as a new person, as a new crea crea creation. So we become our sons and daughters of uh, of the Lord, but only Jesus was begotten. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to we need to recognize God as a Father, since uh, Jesus Christ was conceived by the Holy Ghost. In First John five and seven says that even the heaven bear record, uh, record, for there is three that bear record in heaven: 
the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And those three are one. So we see is the only one. Praise the name of the Lord. The Father is not, is not his name. Father is not a name. You know, a lot of people, they, they got confused in what Matthew 28, 19 says. Can you please put us Matthew 28, 19? A lot of people, they get confused what this verse says. The Father is not a name. I'm a father, but I'm, that's not my name. Go in therefore and teach all nations, but teach them in the name. In the name, not in the names. There's no plurality anywhere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. There is no plurality, there are no three people in one name. One name, and that name is Jesus. We are baptized in the name of Jesus because there is no other name given in heaven or earth to be baptized. Can you put us Acts 4 and 12? Praise the name. It's not part of my note, but it came. Acts 4 and 12. Neither there is salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men where we must be saved. There is no other name, only the name of Jesus. So if you go and tell me you are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy God, that is not the name. That is not the name. We have told you in which name we need to be baptized. Acts 2.38. Can you put us Acts 2.38? Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of who? In the name of Jesus Christ. Because there is only one name given. There is no other, there is no two or three names that are given. For the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We must know there is no two or three. There is only one name under heaven or earth. Praise the name of the Lord. So whoever tell you that father is a name, just tell you, Mama, Father, you are a mother, but that's not your name. Brother Barak, are you a father? He is a father, but that's not his name. His name is Barak. So, let us not confuse with the things that people come and tell and let us go deep in the word of the Lord and let us hear what the Lord has to say. Praise the name of the Lord. If you go in the Trinity, the Father is the first person in the Godhead. The Son is the second person in the Godhead. And the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Holy in the Godhead. But there is no way the scripture says something like that. There is no there is nowhere in the scripture that we see all these three uh, coming. The first one, the biggest problem I have with this is that if we go like that, the Holy Ghost, we are told, is the one who uh, who went to Mary so Jesus can be born. So how can Jesus be number two and the Holy Ghost be number three? If the Holy Ghost is a different person, so you have the Father who is a person, and you have the Holy Ghost who is a person. So, why, how can we have three? And there is nowhere in the Bible, there is nowhere in the Bible indicating the man Jesus Christ pre-existed before Bethlehem. There's no scripture you, you can search the whole Bible in the Old Testament. Say Jesus was pre-existed. Jesus was born. Jesus was born as a baby. And he grew up. He did not exist before Bethlehem. So, he cannot be... Uh, you know, I was, uh, I was reading the Greek uh, Bible. The version I had is, I think, the Greek Orthodox they use. So they were, they were saying, because the Holy Ghost uh, moved on Mary, and Mary gave birth, and that's how uh, Jesus became a God separate. The same time, Mary became a God. And I was like, there's no way Mary is referring as a God in the Bible. We all know that in the upper room, 
Mary was among the people who received the Holy Ghost. If she was God, she did not need the Holy Ghost. So, there's something wrong with this version that they are saying. There is no clear explanation of what they believe. Because we, knew, we know Mary was used as a vessel for, for, the, for Jesus to be born. And Mary was, he needed the Spirit of the Lord as much as everybody. That's why in the day of the Pentecost in upper room, she was among the 120 who were, who were in the upper room. And the Bible, and he, the Bible does not tell us, uh, he tells us about the disciples who were there, but also say the women and Mary were there. So, he wants to tell us that Mary was, uh, was a person like me or you, who is not lifted high because he gave birth to Jesus. Remember, even the first miracle, when Jesus went to, in the wedding, he told her woman. So, for her, she may know who Jesus is because the angel spoke to her, but she's not a God. She's not a God. Let us not uh, bring things which are not in the scripture. Praise, praise the name of the Lord. Let us go and let us remain what the word of the Lord says. Because this is the Alpha and the Omega. If you go out of this, the word of God, you have lost. Let us use the word of God to see who Jesus is. We were told clearly in 1 Timothy 3.16 that God manifested his him in the flesh. So, what they, told, they tell us about the three or how many they have, I don't understand it. I try to understand, but their Godhead does not make, does not make, somehow it gets lost. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus was not another God coming to existence. But it was God manifested in the flesh. If it was another God, we could have told, we could be, that's not God. God exists forever. He cannot be born. He cannot birth someone and say he is a God. God exists. God is about, is again, is above time or, or space. So, if you have a God who will be born, that is not a pure God. And that's why they, have, they can make a graven image of him and, and worship the images because they don't understand who Jesus is or who God is. They don't understand. Because if you understand who God is, God is a spirit. So you need to worship him in spirit. You don't you need to worship him in flesh. Whatever you worship in flesh is not of God. We need to worship the Lord in spirit because the Lord is a spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, in the Old Testament, they had the tabernacle. But the tabernacle had, did not have any image of the Lord. He didn't have any graved uh, structure of the Lord. He didn't have anything that we see today they are using. And they say this is the house of the Lord. The tabernacle, the tabernacle in the Old Testament, if you have read the whole tabernacle, if you go to the Holy of Holy, you are told the Spirit of the Lord was there. You are never told that it had an image or something. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to stop to worship the things made by us. As Paul told the Athenians, the people of Athens, stop worship the God that is made by man. Stop worship the Lord, the gods that are, uh, are made by the hand of the man. Because those gods, they cannot take you anywhere. I think I, in Asia, there was, um, in one country many years ago, there was a flood. And it flooded in one Catholic church. And the people there, they risked their life to go and take the Holy Mary statue from uh, from the church, so they were carrying it. So they were carrying that statue. So somebody asked them, if it is God, why are you carrying it? He's supposed to save you, not you him. You know, when you carry Jesus, the, something that Jesus has come, and you're taking the statue or the image of Jesus to save it, who's supposed to save who? You're supposed to save the God or the God supposed to save you? 
you know, let us be, let us be what the Lord said. Let us worship him in spirit. You cannot worship him in flesh. There is no way in scriptures, there is nowhere the, the Lord say, uh, worship this. There is one time I was speaking to someone and he told me, what you say is wrong. The Lord uh, made something that uh, the, the bronze serpent that they, were more, they made in Exodus, when there were snakes who were eating the children of Israel, they made, the Lord told him, told Moses to make the, gold, the bronze serpent. He made it that one. And they were told, whoever who sees this, uh, he will be killed. And that's why you see the Greek pharmacy, they have that, that, uh, that, that statue there, because of that verse. But if you read forward in Ezekiel, came and broke this and said, you don't, you don't need to worship this. King Ezekiel broke it. Because we need to worship the Lord as a spirit, not as an image or something. Praise the name of the Lord. God Father, God, uh, God's fatherhood should not confuse us in the Godhead. God has not changed. He has not created another God. He is the same eternal. God as a spirit became the man Jesus Christ and dwelt in him fully in order to become our savior. Praise the name of the Lord. If you read the Bible, you can understand who Jesus is. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, we were told that he come and save you to come and save us. Let us read uh, Isaiah 43, 10 to 13. You, you are my witness, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know that be, and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall be after me. There's no God formed. I even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Praise the name of the Lord. There's no other Savior who will come and save you. I have declared, and I have, I have said, and I have shown when there was no stranger God, the, there was no strange God among you. Therefore, ye are my witness, says the Lord, that I am God. Praise the name of the Lord. Ye, before the day was, I am he, and there none that can deliver out of my hand, and I will work, and, I, and who shall let it eat? Praise the name of the Lord. And we read in Isaiah, let's continue, 44, 44 and 6, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Please, there is no God. And who as I shall call and, and shall declare it and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid, for I have told thee from the time and I have declared it. Ye are even my witness. Is there a God beside me? Ye, there is no God. I know not any. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord from the beginning, he knew everything because he's created everything. But he said, I not know any. How can we can say he know everything and he say I know no any? Because there is no one beside him. There is no one beside him. There is only one God. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us continue. Isaiah 45, 5 and 6. This is the Old Testament. I am the Lord. There is none else. There is no God beside me. I give thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know me from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Praise the name of the Lord. Three times he has said, there is none beside me. So who are the other gods? 
Where they are. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. There is only one seated in the throne. And when we when we go to heaven, we never go to see three. We are not going to see a monster with three heads. We are going to see only one seated on the throne. And that is Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. And the last verse, we are not going to finish. I'm going to continue the next week so we can see who is the Son and the Holy Ghost. We are reading about the Father and see how about the nature of the Godhead. The last verse is Ephesians 4 to 6. There is one body, one spirit, even as he called in one hope. Please. In in one hope of your calling, there is only one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all in and in you all. Praise the name of the Lord. The scripture says it's only one. In the God who is dwelling all the fullness in, in, in the body in the body of Jesus Christ. There is no two baptism, there is no two things. There is only one God and Father of all. He's our Heavenly Father. Let us not go and look for other uh, things people say. Let us go to the scriptures. Let us believe what the word of God says. It is the inspiration of God. This, if you want to know the Lord, just look Him in the Word. Don't go and look Him anywhere outside. We need to believe that He is only one God. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm very glad that in our church we have the two verses, the two major verses, right and left. If anybody asks you, that's quoting 6 4 or Ephesians 6, Ephesians 4, 4 to 6, praise the name of the Lord. Let us believe in one Lord. Let us not go and dwell with the people who say there are two or three or I don't know how many there are. From the beginning, God was and it exists forever. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we clap our hands? I'm going to continue next week because of the time, and I know today we have, I heard that there's no metro and some roads are closed. So let us next week come and let us learn more about the word of the Lord. It's not, a, it's not what I say, it's what the word of the Lord says. Praise the name of the Lord. Before we close, let's take an offering. Let us give unto the Lord who's a cheerful. Oh Lord Jesus, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, Father. I say thank you for your work, thank you, O oh Lord, for speaking to us, O oh Lord. In this hour, oh Lord, as we're going to give our offering, O oh Lord Jesus, let us give with an open heart, O oh Lord, unto you, O oh Lord Jesus. Let us give with a gladness in our heart. We give you all the glory, Father, for there is none like you. We pray for blessing for those who give and those who don't have, O oh Lord Jesus. We say thank you for everything we give, we thank you for your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks.
thankful and grateful is a God has an effect. Let us close with the word of prayer. Oh Lord Jesus, we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor. Thank you, O oh Lord, for this day and everything you have done for us, O oh Lord. From morning you have worked with us, O oh Lord. Even this time, O oh Lord, we continue asking you, O oh Lord, to work with us, O oh Lord. We thank you, give you all the glory, Father, for the rest of life like you. We say thank you for your word, O oh Lord, for today, O oh Lord Jesus. Let us, that heart, the word be in our hearts, O oh Lord Jesus. I give you all the glory, Father, give you the honor, Father, for the rest of life like you. Thank you, O oh Lord, as we go to be part of Lord. Be with us, O oh Lord. Protect us in the road, in the road, O oh Lord. Even be with us, O oh Lord Jesus. Thank you for your everything. Thank you for who you are. Even for the rest of the days that we will be together again, O oh Lord. Be with us. Now the glory shall belong to you. I pray for blessing for each house in the presence here, O oh Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. God bless you all.